everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you what is the weirdest but also surprisingly the fastest way to iterate a collection in C Sharp without going into unsafe code territory. This is a technique actually that is used by Microsoft themselves in places like the .NET runtime and I want to bring it here to you today, explain how it works and compare it with other ways of iterating collections. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsus.com. But before I move on, I want to let you know that I'm running a massive Black Friday discount at my website, nickchapsus.com, which is where I'm hosting my own full-length courses. Until the 28th of November, you can go there and use discount code BF2022 for 25% off any individual course or 15% off any of the already discounted bundles. These courses contain real-world techniques from experiences that I had working in enterprise and high-scale microservice systems, and packaged in a very easy to consume way for all of you. So if you want to do what thousands of you have done already, check the link in the description and go to nickchapsas.com. Now let me show you what I have here and this is a bit of a follow-up video in a previous video I did about fast looping in C Sharp. And just to refresh your memory, these are the techniques we covered in that video. So we had an array or a list in that video and then we checked normal for loop, for each loop and also for looping on a span and I showed you how you can get a span of a list and obviously the one on the span was the fastest out of all of them but in this video we're gonna go a bit further the technique we're gonna see still uses spans but it actually approaches it differently making it usable in other constructs and in other scenarios now i'm gonna show you just the loop here but we're gonna see some use cases from microsoft themselves to see how they're using it now let's start with the setup so first i'm gonna use a random class so i can get deterministic random data every time i run this example and then the easiest way you can probably iterate this, as all of you know, is the normal for loop. So this is what it looks like. If I run it, you'd expect to see a hundred numbers printed in the console. And if I run it again, it will be the same numbers printed because we're using that random class with a pinned seed. Now, Rider, my ID actually suggests change this to a for each loop. And if I do so, yes, we're going to get the same numbers and the same thing. But actually compared to the two for each will be a bit slower. We're going to see that in some benchmarks later as well. So if you really care about squeezing as much performance as possible, you should use a for loop, not a for each loop. The explanation as to why this is a case is because the list actually has my numerator. And if we see how this code is being translated, you will see that here the for loop isn't using any numerator. It is just a normal for loop when it's being lowered into low level C sharp. However, if I change this to a for each loop and I recompile so this is reconstructed, you can see that now we have this enumerator here, which needs to be enumerated with this move next, and then it needs to be disposed in the end. So it's a bit more elaborate. So this is why you have this small difference in performance. And yes, in .NET 7, the performance difference is way smaller, and we no longer actually have the extra memory allocations that for each loops would also have. So they're better now, but they're still not as performant as a for loop. Now let's remove all that and see what's this technique I'm talking about. The first thing you need is to actually get a span out of your collection. I'm going to get a span of int here. And I've talked about what the span is in a dedicated video going very in-depth on how it works. So I highly recommend you check that out. But if I say list as span and I use the collections marshal dot as span method, then I can actually get a span of the list items. Now you have to be careful, this as span method actually accesses the internal items array, which is backing up the list items. And if you try to mutate the items while you're enumerating a list using this technique, you will not get an error. So you have to be careful. And now you're probably thinking, hey, Nick, I have the span. Why don't I just iterate the list as a span? And if I actually run this, I will get the exact same result. And this is actually super fast. It is, in fact, the fastest way we could run this in that previous video I showed you. However, we're actually going to do something different now. We're still going to have the loop. But here's how we're going to approach it. Outside of the loop, we're going to get a ref var of the search space. And we're going to get that using ref memory marshal dot get reference. And we're going to get a reference to that span or read only span. In this case, it is a span. So list as span. And I'm going to use this. And if we actually see the description of what this method is doing behind the scenes, as it says, it returns a reference to the zeroth element of the span, so the first element of the span. And if the span is empty, it returns an empty reference. Let's run this, let's debug this to see exactly what this will return. So let's step over that. And as you can see here, we have the items, all of them, three, one, 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 four, 
And if I go to the search page, the search page, the default value is 311, which is the first item in that collection, which is also the first item now in our span, which is a contagious piece of arbitrary memory, which basically means we have our starting point. And now what we're going to do is say var item equals unsafe dot add. It will make sense, I promise. Ref search space comma I. And if I do console dot write line and say item and I run this, let's see what happens. As you can see, same numbers all being printed. Now, before I dive into the explanation as to why this works, I'm actually going to make a record, which is a reference type, not a value type, to show you that this also works with, let's say, a wrapper class around our number. So int number comma string text. So have both things. And then I'm going to change this from being a simple thing that returns a list of integers to something that has a number equals random dot next over here. I'm going to return it in two ways. First, I'm going to say new wrapper and then have the number itself and then number dot to string, which basically means that this is now the span of wrapper, which means that if I run this again and just print everything, as you can see, everything still works. We still have the same results being reliably returned. Now, why does this work? Well, two things. First, we get the reference, which is the zeroth point. As you can see here, it actually says returns the reference to the element of the span at index zero. But the reason why the unsafe.add method works is because, as you can see here, it adds an offset to the given managed pointer. And the offset is the index of the loop. And of course, this can be used to get the index or to point read something in that span by just saying, OK, this is my starting point, the reference to my search space. Please give me the item that is four levels deep into that span. And before we go into benchmarks, I want to show you how much this is used in Microsoft's own repositories. As you can see in the .NET runtime itself, this unsafe.add method is used extensively to use that offset and then try to be very efficient with reading something in a span. And of course, the runtime has been optimized to use spans heavily. So that's why we see, I don't know, five pages or more, 121 use cases of this. And I've seen many library authors use this as well. For example, Michael Stipe from the Hot Chocolate Project is also using this. It can be very beneficial if you're working with spans to get as much performance as possible. And even though this is into the unsafe class, it doesn't mean you go into unsafe code. At this point, I should point out that even if you're using two array, this will also work. This, of course, means you don't have to use the as span method because you can convert an array to a span and this will still work. And you also maybe don't want to have the span conversion here because there's a get array data reference over here. So you can just pass down the array itself and you can get the exact same experience. Nothing really changes. The numbers are the same as you can see. Now you might be wondering, okay, Nick, this is great, but how much faster is this? How does it perform to the other versions? And should I even be using this in my code if I don't really know what I'm doing? So I'm going to bring some benchmarks in here. So for all the benchmarks, I'm using benchmark.net and you can actually grab the code from the description if you want to play around with it yourself. But this is the test we have. So we have the same item initialization with a hundred and a thousand and one million items in those collections. The reason why we're doing this is to see how the different techniques scale based on the size of the collection. So is it linear scaling? Is it exponential and so on? And as you can see here, we have a for loop for each loop, a for loop on a span, and then the unsafe loop on that span using the reference and the unsafe.add method. Now, I didn't just want to run this on an array of integers because integers are value types and arrays are a bit special when it comes to how they can be optimized. So I actually run this benchmark with an integer array, with an integer list, with an integer wrap class over here, which is a reference type, and then also with an integer wrap list. And here are all the results where we have an integer array, an integer wrap array, a list of integers, and then a list of integer wraps. And we're going to go with the bottom one, which is the list of the reference types effectively. And as you can see here, four and four each loop for 100 items, 51 nanoseconds, but then for loop on a span and the unsafe.add for loop on a span are basically the same performance. So they tie for the fastest. Now, as you can see, scaling to 100,000 items in that collection, we go to 50 microseconds. So the scaling actually looks to be linear here. And I would say that these two are still within margin of error. So equally as fast at this point. And from what we can see in 1 million items, this scaling trend gets a bit looser, but we still have the exact same scaling between the different types where we have almost a millisecond here, while here we have 
almost half a millisecond or 652 microseconds. Now, if we go to the list of integers, which is the value types, interestingly enough, we see the same scaling, but actually here it is more consistent. So a for loop on a span and unsafe.add on a span seem to be performing exactly the same as you can see over here, but now the scaling stays the same all the way to 1 million. So working with value types seems to be performing better than working with reference types, which is what we'd expect, to be honest. Now, interestingly enough, having an array of reference types over here, the for loop is actually slower than the for each loop. It's actually twice as slow. So there seems to be some optimization there that makes the for each loop be faster than the for loop. It's very weird, but that's the number I got. And it looks to be consistent between these two executions. Now, again, it looks like when we go to 1 million, those performance improvements start to get a bit looser. They're actually not really consistently good on that bigger amount of items in the collection, but we still have a tie for the fastest between these two approaches. And the last one is an array on a value type. So we have all of these four basically performing exactly the same, which my suspicion is that they've been optimized to perform like a for loop on a span. So that's why we have this similar performance and it's actually scaled linearly all the way to 1 million. So an array of value types will actually perform better than all of them and all of them really are tied for the best performance. So what conclusions can we draw out of this? Well, it does appear that this approach is the fastest, but it's equally as fast as a for loop on the span itself. However, the reason why this approach might be very useful and very attractive to you is because this thing isn't really only usable when iterating. You can actually use this as an offset on a search space, and this can be useful in many, many situations. Again, you can go ahead and see how Microsoft is using it for their own stuff to optimize things like string comparisons or GUID conversions, I think. So it's used in many, many places. Now, should you use this? Well, unless you really, really, really know what you're doing and what you're optimizing, I would say no. I would stick with the for loop on the span. It is equally as fast, just not as flexible. However, you probably don't need that flexibility to begin with. And if you do need it, you probably know what you're doing, so I can trust you with this knowledge. But what do you think? Do you think that you would ever write C sharp like this? And what do you think about the biggest argument of if I need to write C sharp like this, why am I even writing C sharp anyway if I have to deal with pointers and references and all this crazy stuff that C C++ is doing? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.